Imagine yourself at a place filled with tranquility and giving yourself a treat of fresh oxygen in solitude away from the hustle and bustle, especially when your own city treats you harshly. And I was lucky enough to actually find such a place but throws a chance to understand and become a part of the civilization called Bhutan. We entered Bhutan from Phunshaling border on day 1 and stayed there overnight to get the required permissions next day to proceed further. Day 2 we travelled from Phunshaling to Thimphu, the capital city of Bhutan. The city seems to be the business centre of Bhutan and home to their very own His Highness Jigme Hassar Namgyal Wangchul. Countries are not separated by borders, instead they are divided by culture and tradition. They have brilliant architecture to complement by some wonderful civic sense even in small towns. After spending two glorious days in Phunshaling and Thimphu in a four-wheeler, it was the time to get little hands on the best suited vehicle, a Royal Enfield Himalayan, for the rest of our journey. Thimphu hotel manager and Royal Enfield staff were very courteous and supportive as we got a hold of this devil on road without any hassle. Solitude and gratitude are simple words which in true sense hold the ocean of calmness and sky of humbleness or we can use a better synonym like Buddha. This sculpture is a true reflection of dedication and the belief of the native population. This spot known as Buddha Dordenma offers so much peace and binds you to spend as much time as possible by offering some soulful views. Iconic National Charton built in the city of Thimphu in the memory of 3rd Duke Gelpo is dedicated to world peace. Another such beautiful stop is Dojula Pass, which has 108 Jordans made to honor the martyrs of Bhutanese army. In Bhutan, you never get to know how quickly you make it to your next spot while encountering some amazing mountain and valley views. This place is very peaceful and a walk with yourself in the Divine Passage is a must to experience the soulfulness of this place. It is amazing to see that this pass is covered with clouds and low temperatures at all the times of the day with clear skies on either sides. Wow is the feeling when you witness such a landscape. Day 4 we reached Punakha. This place is really quiet with only the Sang Chu or Po Chu, the local river, making all the noise in the town. Finding yourself in the middle of such a natural arrangement is mesmerizing. This place is famous for Punaka Zong and Punaka Suspension Bridge, apart from offering the natural beauty it possesses. Punakha Zong, also known as Pongthang Deva Chenbi Fodran, meaning the Palace of Great Happiness or Bliss, is very aptly named and placed around Po Chu to offer some amazing pictorial spots to get yourself clay. In this tradition of suspension bridges in Bhutan, this Punaka suspension bridge holds the status of being the longest one. Yet, for a roughly 520 foot long suspension bridge, it is surprisingly stable. The bridge offers a spectacular view of the river and gorgeous valley to be complemented by a small cafe at the other side of the bridge. Every inch of Punakha possess and offer so much natural beauty which is unparalleled. After driving 65 kilometers from Punakha, we reached Fobjika to witness the 17th century old structure famously known as Gagate Monastery. Fobjika is famous for the black naked cranes who comes here once in a year and this holy monastery only. The feeling of silence and solace was never so soothing as it felt here in this holy place.
a picturesque surrounding at this very place at the cherry on the top while it offer many unknown points possessing utmost serenity happy glowing faces of monks teaches a lot about compassion and gratitude while the local made souvenirs are just surreal if nothing else In almost every part of Bhutan, people are very welcoming, kind, and full of gratitude. The clear blue skies, amazing sunshine views with low temperatures, lush green fields, small road passing through them. Everything here seems to be so perfectly positioned to call it a little heaven. And we, soul trippers, found a spot to mark our presence in this heaven. Day 6 Paro happened to be our last resort of this expedition. The city is situated at a distance of 50 km away from the capital city of Thimphu. Settled around the Paro Chu, the city offers a lot to the tourists. First of all, the Paro song called Ringpung song made in the 15th century is majestically placed at one side of the Paro Chu, offering a spectacular view to the visitors. Airport is another tourist attraction situated just outside the city offering mesmerizing sunrise and sunset views. Paro is also the gateway to the Holy Tiger Nest Monastery which is the most buzzing point of Bhutan. One can reach to this holy place after a little pressing trek extended to about 5 kilometers and 700 stone stairs to follow. One need around 3 to 3 and a half hours to climb up and approximately 2 hours to descend down. Tiger Nest is a sacred Buddhist site constructed in 1692. As a point of discipline, you have to submit your camera and mobile phones outside the entrance which is absolutely safe. The placement of this construction is breathtaking. just at the verge of the cliff which catches you by surprise as we cannot imagine how difficult it is to make such a structure at this kind of place even today the bhutanese people are very hard working and we haven't seen anyone begging anywhere during our journey this country is the world's only signal free country yet there are no congestion bhutan gives you a chance to travel alone and discover the relishing fruit of solitude in nature's lap in this expedition actually get to know why bhutan is the happiest country in the world it is because they believe in giving more than taking or rendering in these cold degrees there's a warmth in their interaction as a general notion this was indeed a must trip in the small journey called life Stay tuned with Soul Trippers for more such soulful experiences.